And welcome everybody, it's John. It is 5.30 on a Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's Tech on Tuesday. So, <laughs> welcome. This is episode number 16. I've got a lot of really cool stuff to show you. It's kind of a smorgasbord. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means or where that came from, but maybe you guys in the chat could look it up for me and let me know. <laughs> uh, I got some chats coming in already here. Uh, one of them, Randy J says, you need a gadget that starts your show on time, or I need Amazon to uh, wake up when I tell it to. <laughs> so had a couple last minute things, got the creator app. I figured why not? But uh, yeah, a, a tick time might be a good uh reminder or a watch you know but regardless uh we are here i see a few of you guys are already coming in which is awesome i'm gonna let the amazon folks in like i told you about before i see we got a moderator in here zachary welcome welcome uh some cool products to show you guys today um honestly i've been using one of them for a week now i'm gonna give you a sneak peek at it and one of them arrived like 10 minutes ago from the amazon delivery angel <laughs> It was really funny. Just serendipitous timing, right? You know, I can't tell when the things are going to show up. I do have a giveaway today, and I do want to tell you all about that. I'm going to give you uh, giveaway details on how to enter. And that's this product, which is going to be first up on the show. Let me get going on the Amazon, and I can show you what it is. Hey, welcome, Amazon shopper. It's John the Net Guy, and you're tuned in to Tech on Tuesday which is our live 5.30 p.m. Pacific show every Tuesday. And today's show, we're going to kick it off with this outlet extender surge strip, which I want to show you here. I'll show you on the side camera. It's pretty cool. So it's got surge capabilities, three USB ports, and six outlets in this little tiny package. Let me show you what that's like. I almost thought this was something that would be good for a travel device. Let's see. We need, a, we need an unboxing tool that's you know, small and, you know, I'm, I'm kind of jealous of some of these other channels that have like chainsaws to unbox. So we're just going to use this thing, but I'll, I'll put it away real quick <laughs> before the Amazon sensors get here. But yeah, this is a surge strip from Tron D company. And what's cool about it is just the compact nature of it. If you think of, I've got surge protectors and other stuff everywhere. They're this long, right? And to get six outlets with the ability to put in AC adapters, not the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see this here on the overhead camera. Simple on-off power reset. It's got the protection indicator right there. It's going to have two outlets on the top, two outlets on each side with grounded poles. So that's important. And then on the end, you get those bonus three USB ports. Hey, welcome, guys. Uh, <laughs> you call that a knife, Pinky Sex says. Oh, sorry, I can't say that. Uh, we don't have our, our contingent from the uh, down under here. But pretty cool little device. Let me show you one neat thing about it that I didn't really expect. So I'm going to use my little extension cord here. When you put it in, it's going to look something like this. Let me go over to the side camera here. So you can have it this way, but it will actually turn. So see how I'm rotating it? So if you've got some, you know, maybe some congestion on your outlets, on your wall outlets, it's really designed for the wall. I'm just using this because it's on my bench, but you can rotate it each direction here. So you can go 180, I think it's 135, it said the other way. So you can get it completely out of the way of the socket below, which is pretty slick. So this is actually going to be the product that I'm giving away today. So if you're interested in this product, it is available on Amazon right now. It's $15.29. So a little bit more than maybe one of the Amazon basic surge strips, but pretty slick because it comes with that USB charger. Let me see if I have the stats on this right. So you probably can't see those really close there, but it's 2.4 amps times three on the USB. So you're going to get high powered, high speed USB ports there on the charging. Um, overall, it's got a 1440 joule rating. That's for the surge. And I'm looking to see here, it says 1875 max power. Now on all of these devices, I don't recommend running motor loads and other stuff like that, even though you got 1800 Watts. But conceptually, it could work. So how do I get into the giveaway is going to be the next question. <laughs> this show is decidedly awesomely without him. Yep, we need Kren for that. I'm going to hit the button here. The giveaway address is now down here. So if you want to enter the giveaway, thenetguy.com slash Tron D. That's just the company name. Tron, like the cool sci-fi movie. And D as in 
don't get away with it. <laughs> uh, but you can fill out that form. It's just going to put a live entry in. I don't contact you with that later. It also has the rules listed on that page. So you can see all the rules about the entry. Uh, but this is a live giveaway. So we're going to give this away before the end of the show. And let me know that. <laughs> <laughs> before i don't want to forget an accident i almost had it happen one time where i forgot to give the giveaway item but i want to thank tron d for sending this out i'm going to do another video on this you'll probably see it on my site again not something super complicated when you're trying to learn how to use one of these things you put it in the wall outlet there's the tech specs that it comes with there hopefully you guys can see those and then some safety precautions and other information. It should probably talk about overloading. Um, intended use, three-wire grounded outlets only, obviously. Proper cleaning. Don't be washing this thing you know, if it gets dirty. But I did think of a, a use case for this that would be really cool is if I was going to go traveling. Now, we just went on a road trip this weekend. You're going to see some cool dash cam and other cool footage. But I actually plugged this in. I don't have in my new little car... I don't have back USB ports and the kids had their tablets. They had, I uh, actually had the vacuum that I'm going to show later in the car charging because it's USB-C. I plugged them all into the bottom and I plugged this into the inverter outlet that it has uh, and it worked great. So that's from again, Tron D company. That's going to kick us off. I'm going to bring up the Amazon page real fast on it. And if you guys are ever wondering, how do I, John, <laughs> find you on the Amazon page? It's literally amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash the net guy and you can come to my amazon shop here you can see us live it's kind of picture in a picture in a picture <laughs> it's going to be kind of funny there but this is where you see the products that we have going live but i also every show i make an idea list and i don't know if you notice all this purple but my editors have been just cranking out videos for me so we're cutting these scenes into cool videos so you might have caught me on amazon so hopefully you saw that but let's go ahead to here and i'm going to click on the featured item right now which is this tron d outlet uh and you know amazon rating here <laughs> four out of five it's only got six ratings pretty new product and oh there's a 20 percent off on top of that i forgot about that they're coding that 20 percent in right now so it's started today to get 20 percent additional i don't know what that'll compute to somewhere around three bucks off so now you're back to 12 bucks which is pretty slick on this one uh, but that's the tron d i'm going to show you if they've got any better pictures sometimes they have better pictures than i do but there we go that's the rotation capability so it's like i said it's 180 on one side and 135 on the other which gives you a huge range of motion to get out of the way of another plug if you have one here and there's the surge protection which you always want to have there's the smart charging ports and yeah i could see this being used traveling a lot and what's cool about it is that one switch turns everything off so if you're one of those people that when you leave you want to turn things off my my godmother's just like that hopefully you're watching <laughs> she wants everything off and she leaves it's got a simple push button so you don't have to unplug things or do anything so that's pretty cool and let's double check yeah so use it in a kitchen or anywhere else just like that and then yeah very small 4.6 inches i would say it's actually smaller than a soda can i don't have a soda can in here but um definitely small so i'm going to put that off to the side somebody is going to win this exact unit here and i'll pay for shipping i'm going to get that out to you as soon as we can speaking of we did have a winner two weeks ago for the Tonor TC30 microphone. Thanks again, Tonor, for providing that. That's what I'm trying to do is, you know, share the wealth a little bit here. I got way too many products to review and I don't need them all, but I want to give a chance for you guys to win these things for absolutely free, which is awesome. So I'm going to bring up our next product. And while I do that, I'm going to check the chat real quick. If you are on Amazon watching right now, by the way, I'm John the Net Guy. There is a follow button down there. If you hit that, you're going to get notified every single time I go live, which is awesome. And if you give me a follow, it lets me know right now, and then I can give you a shout out, which is even cooler. So, you know, if you want to have me say something on here, uh, recognize you, or just tell me the city that you're from. That would be kind of cool. I see there's seven of you right now already on Amazon watching this. Um, you know, I'm going to go with the product that I had planned next, <laughs> which here we go. This is not a sponsored product. This is a product I bought myself, and it's actually an electric screwdriver let me pull this up as a nerd you always need precision tools and i actually have been working on a bunch of things i use this thing today 
before the show to fix something I'll tell you about here in a second. But this is an HP laptop notorious for having about 6 million extra screws. I think they decided that the more screws you put in a laptop, the stronger that this thing's going to be. So I've been using this for a little bit over a week. This is what the tool comes in. This is the carrying case, which kind of looks like a, a cigar box, right? <laughs> so, you know, it has that push in release. I'm going to do this on the side camera so you guys can see this real close. So there's literally the case. You push it in, slide it out, and there are all of your bits. So you can set that down wherever you're working. So it looks like this. The tool itself, really, really easy to use. Out and in. Out and in that's the only two directions you have to worry about on this one uh super easy a couple little things that i think would have been nice you know uh, the bits are not magnetized when you get them out and this was really confusing to me last week it was really funny so um, you put the bits in just like that so i slid that bit in but actually my mod figured this out if you go down here there's a hole that is magnetized in the case and you can magnetize the specific bit that you need now this is magnetized so maybe you don't want magnetized bits on what you're working on some people don't so i'm just going to go in here and i'm going to back it out you know what this is so cool i'm going to try to get you a really close-up view of this i'm going to see if my side camera can see this i'll try to do this one-handed without destroying it so i've got the standard phillips on here right and i'm going to put it in there now you can manually use it or you can see it's just backing that screw right out. So again, this HP has got about 16 million extra screws that it didn't need. <laughs> and so this makes a quick work of an HP like this. And, uh, you know, let me know in the chat what kind of things you guys work on. I work on cell phones. I get that a lot. Um, work on power supplies. Work on mobile phones. And mobile phones are becoming super, super annoying with all the different sizes of screws. I'm just going to pick a tiny tiny one here and maybe you can see the size of this thing you know the the bit heads here that's actually got a head on it let's i don't know if that's a phillips or a tri -Y or a pentalobe you know they've got all the different ones here but that's literally the kit right there so you can see all of them are clearly labeled right above them it's hard to see in my lighting but they have a little silver indication of what they are and they also have the indication on the side a uh, little complaint about it. It would have been nice if it had a thicker Phillips, like a, a PH2, a uh, little bit larger size. But, you know, I get it. It's not designed for big loads. And so if you come across a screw that's been, well, put in by me. <laughs> so, you know, this thing right here can actually be used manually. So let me show you real quick on the side camera how that works. So the back of the unit right here is where your adjustment is. So you have high torque. If I turn it to the middle, that's manual or locked. And if I turn it over there, that's low torque. So what's going to happen is, as I turn it, it's just going to stop a lot faster. So when I give it some pressure, it's going to stop real quick. Um, but if you put it on manual, then it's all on you. You're controlling it like a regular manual screwdriver. The buttons don't work anymore. And then that's where you keep it on for charge. And if you put it on high torque, you can hear it, maybe. <laughs> you know stressing out a little bit but it works really well i've been really impressed with this one let me switch back over here i was just taking this hard drive out to see actually what's in it i don't remember what i left in this computer if you've got questions about these let me know um, from a pricing perspective it looks like right now this thing's got overnight shipping um, this is the e1 pro let me pull that up here on amazon so you guys can see it and again, if you want to find where these are, they're just in my Amazon shop. If you go there, you can see I purchased this back, uh, oh, about eight days ago when I bought it. And then four and a half star rating. There are a lot of ones out there that don't have nearly as good of a rating as this one, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to come back to that chat message, Pinky. <laughs> and you can save an extra 10 bucks on there. So it gets about 45 bucks. But I actually got another one of these as well. So if maybe this one's a little bit too large, you think, you don't want to carry something so big. I literally just got this thing a few minutes ago. Like I said, it came up. This is the X5. I don't know if I have it in the show carousel yet. Let me see real fast. Because it was such a late addition. Let me see if I've got it in my idea list at least. Because then I can show you. Yeah, so I do have the X5. Now, this one maybe is a little bit more affordable. Um, I'm going to open it up live here, but I'll show you real quick what it is. 
So same kind of thing. It's a 25 and one. It's on sale right now for 1997 and I bought it last night and it literally arrived the next day. So that was pretty cool. Uh, again, little more compact version. I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up. Let's get that unboxing toothpick out. <laughs> we'll see if I can do this without hurting myself. Uh, this was not designed to be on the show today and I will not, um, you know, bore you saying I know everything about it yet. We're going to test it out here and I'll let you know. Uh, I'll just compare and contrast the size of the one that we do have here. And the packaging on these things is nothing short of cool. So they've they've definitely won the package battle here. I'll show you why. <laughs> so when I pull this open, so there's the outer, right? <laughs> I believe you've been expecting me. This same one on their larger one. It's going to have the instruction manuals, which I didn't read last time. So I skipped a couple of important steps. And I'm going to open this. Once I do this, it's not going to go back on. So that's kind of a good safety seal. So you know that this thing is brand new. Awesome. And of course, same concept. You just push down, pops open like a cigar case. This one's probably half the size. Actually, you know what? I like this. I like this size. You know, almost a little bit better for portability. So, you know, I'm showing you that right there. Let me put them side by side so you can see. One of the things that I was worried about was there's the, the two different sizes. So this is the one I'm showing you now. That's about $45 with the coupon. And then this is the one right now that's $19.97. That's the X5 versus the Big Daddy. So um, definitely has similar things. Uh, Non-powered, obviously, on this one. So you're going to go the difference between a powered or not. I have actually heard some really good things about this one. Uh, again, you're going up against the likes of the iFixit cases. Really super smooth bearing on the back of this thing. And I know if you guys are like me, you hold one hand down and, you know, we could definitely, we could race these. So, you know, I could take that screw out like that and I was just holding down with the back of this. I'm going to go ahead and put that back in, see if I can find two of these. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the chat. I'm going to pull that up real quick. And there's what Pinky said earlier. Oh, I love that profile picture you've got there, Pinky. <laughs> Keep it away from the beard. We don't want you to have any bare spots. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. So, yeah, that is a difference. A lot lighter weight on this one, obviously, because of the no batteries. But there's the two sizes. This one definitely you can hold down from the top. And you can, you know, use it that way. This one you can just put in a case. The one thing that was frustrating me last week when I was doing a PC build is you always have that one screw up by the CPU for eight pin and you have to like hold the screw, get in that back dark corner. There is no light on this one. That's another thing that's kind of, I've seen them on a few that have a very small led work light. So hopefully you've got a lot of light where you're working. Um, this hard drive actually turned out to be a 160 momentous. So this was an old donor laptop that I picked up, but yeah, HP went crazy on this with the number of screws and what they did is the screws that they don't want you to get to I'll show you those here in a second the shoes that they uh, the sc screws that they don't want you to get to they made different so they actually went with this Torx head so this is the one right here um, this is the T9H so let me see yeah so that's the T9H so that's why you need all of these various different sizes and lengths so this is a Torx 9 and that's what HP decided to use here on these other ones that open the case up. So you can see magnetic holds that in pretty cool. So that is the powered electric version. Pretty simple. You know, again, if you're doing a lot of work on laptops and you don't want to be going back and forth, you know, um, between <laughs> a bunch of, you know, tools that you have, you can use one tool here. And get most of these in pretty easily. I'm going to put this back together. Let me know if you got any questions on this. Andrew says, those drivers are pretty cool. I would agree, man. I would absolutely agree. I'm going to check on Amazon too as well. See if we got any questions on the Amazon chat. And if you guys are wondering, this is John the Net Guy. We're giving away a Tron D outlet and USB charger. Just double check in the chat real quick. Carlos says, not bad. Hey, Busy started following. Busy on the Amazon Live. Thank you so much for doing that, man. I really do appreciate that. You'll get notified each and every time I go live. And I only need like 
2,000 more <laughs> subscribers. And I can be on the Saturday shows with the A-list, with the cool people that have neat sets and lots of cool products that they work on. So do want to appreciate uh, to thank Tron D again for sponsoring the show today and allowing us to give away their device. It's a newer device, so if you do get it, fill out that Amazon review. That definitely helps out a lot, you know. Um, I've been pretty happy with it, so didn't have a problem recommending this. This is the screwdriver we're looking at today, though. This is the electric driver. Now, as far as torque goes, I think it's three Newton meters. So let me go back over here real quick. I'm going to go back to the Amazon real quick so you can see this. So that is the precision magnetic screwdriver. This is the one I'm showing right here. That's the X5. It's not in there. Uh, getting a question from Jeremy says, is it comfortable in the hand? You know what? I actually, I was worried about that. It's a great question. I was worried that it was going to roll off my desk because it's cylindrical, right? But you'll see the buttons are just tall enough that it keeps it from rolling, you know, so it'll stop it eventually. Um, as far as could they make it any more ergonomic? You know, it's a heck of a lot more ergonomic than the Leatherman, which I usually have to carry and then figure out how to get this and try to use it. But yeah, not bad. They could do a little bit more with like the knurling um, on this one specifically. This is their manual one. It has a lot more grip surface right here. I actually like that. Um, it's almost kind of like on a hand grip, you know, on a, a device that I can't name or we're going to get banned. <laughs> But on one of those devices uh, that has that a little bit more grippy texture, this one's really smooth. But yeah, absolutely. And easy enough to use. Again, super easy. Like we said, there's the manual override, light, and strong mode. So it's got all those capabilities there. So that's that. Let's go back over here. I'm going to take a look at the next product we got coming up. And this one is kind of cool. I'm going to put this away as we go. If you have questions about any of these, just let me know. Happy to answer those. And if I don't have an answer for them, we got lots of cool people in the chat, which are looking along with us, kind of doing this group shopping thing. So again, back in the kit, close it, super easy. Now, if you want something that's a lot smaller that we were talking about, this is the manual version of it. Super skinny, easy to use. But this is definitely, you know, I'm not going to call it high-end, but it's definitely a, a neat option. The case, they've definitely put some time into. Uh, both cases, really nice feel. And they'll, they'll be durable in a bag. The one thing I do like about the iFixit is it's going to have that soft bag. So when you throw it in there with your laptop, it's not going to scratch. This one has some sharp edges up on the top that might run into things. But again, if you're going powered, that's kind of a cool option. So you'll see more about the X5 in a future video real quick. But I'm going to put that down there, and we're going to go on to the next product that we got. Double checking our chat real quick here. That was Jeremy's question. Is it comfortable to hold in the hand? Absolutely, man. Now, that's the product I should have given away, right? <laughs> With all my nerdy friends. And those are the, But I need you guys to buy that one. Now, if you guys do want to buy those, I do want to tell you again. <laughs> this is the uh, follow on Amazon scrolling ticker there as well. As far as how long on a charge, it says two hours continuous use, which I don't know how many screws that is. Uh, honestly, I did not recharge that thing from last week, and I've probably taken out 30 or 40 screws back before the show and then whatever we just did there. So, yeah, I've been using it. Um, you know, generally sits on the desk, stays charged. It charges in a couple hours from dead as well, so I don't think that you're going to be waiting that long. You can give it a 10-minute charge, and it's going to go right away when it did arrive it was completely dead as a doornail and <laughs> it took like five minutes before the light even came on so it definitely uh, was cool definitely a neat product and the cool thing about amazon is if you do get it and you don't like it people do return things and i love their return policy so that's cool and again if you're taking a look at where to get this that amazon slash shop slash the net guy url that's a great url because it has all the stuff and Victoria Diaz, thank you so much for your follow. I love the alligators. That's pretty cool. Uh, and thank, 14 minutes ago you said hi, and I, I was just rude and I didn't say hi. Is that uh, Randy J is asking, where's the charger? That's a great question. Now, uh, it's going to be USB-C charging, but it does not come with a charger on that one. So uh, that's one of the end thing. You're going to have to have a USB. I don't remember it coming with a charger. I could be wrong. Uh, but let, me, let me go check, actually. I want to make sure that I say this correctly to you because I don't remember in that original box. It may have come in the bottom of the box, so don't quote me on that. 
Battery life, what you get... Yeah, it does come with the USB-C charging cable, my bad. So yeah, so it does have the mini electric screwdriver, storage case, 24 bits. You're going to get the, the Philips 1-0 triple aught and double aught SL2s, 1-5s. So it's going to have all of those, uh, all the Torx bits in there. It even has security Torx. It has the Y bits. And I'm just reading them off here. You guys can read as well as I can. And it's got that USB charging cable and a user manual. So there you go. Awesome. It does have a pretty good rating on this one. Again, 4.6, I think is what it was, 4.5. And that's, compared to its competitors, probably one of the highest rated ones I've seen out there. So very cool. Great question on that, Randy. We're going to go back over. Um, it does not include a charger. I think that's probably what I was thinking of. So I just plug this into my workbenches that have chargers now, and my kitchen has a pop-up charger. You might have seen that on previous videos. Um, so I use the pop-up charging post out of my kitchen for that. The next product up, I'm going to have to bring it up on Amazon here, is actually from a company called Rocketbook. Now, this is kind of a cool product. I've wanted one of these for a long time, and I just happened to have an opportunity to pick one up. And of course, I just, like, I trimmed the edges of this to make it especially hard for me to open. But this is the box that it, or sorry, this is the bag that it comes in, and it is a reusable planner. And everybody's like, okay, well, what's, what's a reusable planner? I've had planners all the time. So this is what you get, very simply. It's going to come with a pen. This is uh, the Pilot Friction, F-R-I-X-I-L-N. And it's going to have this little wiping cloth. So why would you need all that wiping cloth? Well, the cool thing about it, this is, again, a monthly planner, so it's got my month. But the neat thing is, it's the last one you ever need, right? As they say, I've got tons of these, right? I've got tons of these. I get them half full. I lose them. Something happens to them. This one is a smart planner, though. So let me see if I can pull up something here that I can show you. <laughs> uh, hey, how about the run of show for today? So this is what I was writing down here. There's the Fantix screwdriver, magnetic or not, carrying case, rocket book, portable planner. This is like space balls when he like sees the thing he's supposed to talk about. Friction pen. The cool thing about this, and I have to write it down, is 140 degree disappear. The ink that comes out of this is really sneaky. This ink will disappear. This is not normal paper. It's super smooth. That's one thing you'll notice that's different about it it will disappear, this ink, when it hits 140 degrees. Now, I haven't even opened this up yet, but one of the neat things about this wiping cloth here is that you can get it wet, and you can wipe all of this text away, and it's completely gone. Now, interestingly enough, I got the bark collar notes here coming up. I'm going to grab my phone, because I wanted to show you guys this. Got to give myself a little bit more room here. So I've got my phone, and I'm going to open up the Rocketbook app. Well, I got to show it to you guys too. So let's do this. <laughs> There's my app. This is literally my phone. So as I move it around here, you're seeing it. I'm going to go ahead and hit new scan. And then I'm going to scan this page. Now it just took a picture of it. Now I've checked off one of the seven different boxes that it has along the bottom. And those are important for a reason. And these QR codes are also important for a reason. I checked off the one that has an apple. So... Uh, I don't need a whiteboard. I want the rocket book. <laughs> I'm going to hit next because we've scanned that. You see what it says transcribing? It is literally converting my handwritten notes into OCR, basically into text. Now, when I hit send, that's sending it to the destination I've predefined. So if you have one for work, if you've got one for home, let's take a look. I think I have a second page going on here. If you've got a business, yeah, this is the, the dash cam notes that I have for the car dash cam coming up. I'll just align this. Now it's looking for that QR code. It's even fixing the, the layout of the screen. And I'm going to hit next. And, oh, sorry, it should have picked out. I did not check the bottom of it. That's why it actually asked it. So it's saying, hey, what do you want to do with this? Which, which destination? Now you can configure all of those as individual destinations. But this is pretty slick. If I hit the one that has the apple on it and I hit next... That's going off to the cloud. Okay, so why is that important? Well, coming back here to me, I can take those notes and I can go to my computer now and I'm going to show you what those notes look like. I'm going to go over here and give me one second. <laughs> 
There we go. Now I'm going to bring up my Gmail. So there's my Gmail from Rocketbook. And it's a run of show transcription. Now, not very accurate transcription. <laughs> so you can see there's the case information, magnetic, precision bits, two sizes, friction pen, 40 degrees disappear, wipe onti, erase after is seconds. So not super accurate, but if you don't care about that, take a look at this. This is the PDF version of it that it saves permanently. Now you can integrate this with your Evernote, your Google Drive, or anything like that, and reuse this over and over. Couple things I like, couple things I don't like. Um, I like the fact that it's reusable. That was the main reason that I bought it. I'll show you right away one of the problems that I've had with it. And if you look down here, it's gonna be hard to see, but you see this that's, that's hanging out on this side of the page? It takes about 15 seconds for each page to fixate onto the page. So what's going to happen is, as I write something here, let's see what's coming up in fifth place today. I'm going to go over my show outline. <laughs> okay, it's the fifth place is the 70 my. So I'm just writing with this pen, 70 my hard wire kit. Now, if I smear that, hopefully you guys see what just happened there. That's now smeared. So if I put my hand on it and rub on it, it's gone. It takes about 15 seconds for it to, to safely save. Now the back of the friction pen that you get with it is an eraser. And it's kind of funny because you're used to erasers leaving stuff. This doesn't leave anything. It just wipes it away clean and there's no residue or anything, which is kind of interesting. So now I can write that again. I can say hardware kit. Now, do I have any lefties in the house? I got to know, <laughs> because if you're a lefty, there's going to be another problem with this. Unless you could write, I guess, in a different way. <laughs> that looks really cool. Um, but yeah, if you're a lefty on here and you're writing over your own writing, which a lot of them do. My friend's a lefty. I showed him this. I said, I'm sorry, because <laughs> I know that he has that problem all the time with his hand getting a bunch of, you know, graphite or whatever on the bottom. That would be one drawback on it. Now, if I do a line here and then I close it firmly, and we try to go back to our run of show here. There we go. So now I have two lines, so I've got the mirror image of it. Maybe that's kind of cool. Who knows that? Uh, Randy's asking cost of replacement pens. You know, that's a great thing. I'll pull up the Amazon cart and we'll see what you can get because you can get different colors and other options for these pens. Um, this pen comes with it, so you're going to get that friction pilot. Uh, you know, pilot makes great stuff. This is a 0.7, it looks like. Uh, so that's going to be bold and it's erasable. I've, I've signed other paper checks with this, by the way, recently. So if you got a check and it disappeared, don't know. <laughs> you also cannot write on this with a regular pen. You could, but it becomes permanent if you write on that. Let's pull this up on Amazon, answer a few of these questions we got coming in. Um, Rare Apple's coming in with a question. He says, hey, what happens if you run out of ink? Do they sell extra pens for it? Yep. <laughs> and uh, cost of replacement pens was from Randy. So we're going to take a look at that. So again, if you guys are ever wondering, you're watching this show later, how do I find where all these items are? Maybe I don't have the carousel up. If you're shopping with me on Amazon, it's up on the carousel. This right now is 20% off. It's $30.43 for the whole kit that I'm showing you here. Um, again, minus a couple little things, this could be a really cool tool. If you don't wanna carry a ton of these other notepads, I would consider this. The other thing that is, it doesn't have a lot of pages. It has, one of the pages I like the most is the, the dotted graph paper, because I use that for network diagrams, you know, all sorts of other stuff, drawing, perspective, things like that. It's got, you know, maybe five or six sheets of those. Then it's got a bunch of lined paper and then it has it. Now, this is the planner version. They have many other versions of this. The other thing that was not to me as, you know, good was how thin. So when you go to write, like if I want to write just something down, I'm writing like this. I kind of have to hold this from bending. Now, these ones have a lot firmer, you know, even with just all the pages they have. But even when I'm using them, you know that's a lot firmer when I write, you see, this is not bending. That's one other gripe that I would have on this compared to like a traditional one, but maybe, you know, the lightweight makes up for it. Um, so that could be a really useful thing, but I'm going to bring it up on my Amazon cart real quick here. 
and we're going to bring that up and I'll bring you guys over. So you can see I bought this back in April myself. Uh, I saw it on a good deal. So I snapped that thing right up. They got different colors here. There's that friction pen that you're coming up with. I'm going to bring up their pictures because they generally have a lot better ones <laughs> than I do. So this is the everyday planner. They've got, it looks like an executive version, which is I think the one I've got because it is smaller. Yeah, so this is going to be the executive. Looks like they've got a larger model that you can get. I also saw that they do have other ones. You can use, if you need to wipe the whole page down, you can use this. I did hear something about a model of these that you could throw in. Literally, you could throw it in the microwave and it would erase itself. I think it was the same company. That's why I bought this thing because I was like, oh, is this the one? You know, but that's probably caused enough microwave fires that they say just wipe it off because it's a lot safer. But uh, I can't speak to either here or there. So it's it's saying it's the last planner you'll ever need. It definitely is app controlled. Those are the different pages that it comes with: list pages, custom tables, and don't think I didn't see you in there, Joshua. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm a uh, Facebook friends. I see a friend on there. So he says, Hey, you're amazing. It, yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for coming to the show. Um, but yeah, many different options here. Let's go take a look at some accessories. If I come back down again, scroll down these, you know, it's going to have what they're commonly bought with. Hey, clicker erasable gel pens. So 10 pack about 20 bucks. So yeah, you've got different colored options here. If you want the pages in this, you know, um, comparatively, I don't know if they're a pure white, but I'm going to pull them up here. I've got a few of these different ones that you can see. And this is actually one of my old planners. I'll pull in the top down view. So pretty white. This one's got a little bit more of a color to it. And this one, is almost completely unusable now so yeah it's, it's probably more of a pure white i would say i don't know if it's like you know artist white but there you go so those are the three different uh notebooks that i have here and this is the only one that's a smart notebook now they make some other cool stuff actually their beacons product which is something you'll see in their app can take a regular whiteboard <laughs> You put these little corner tabs on it and it becomes that smart whiteboard because it's already erasable. So they'll use their OCR. They'll use all their transcription stuff where it will transcribe your handwritten notes, your whiteboard diagram, whatever into PDF, into, you know, text documents, whatever you need. So a uh, pretty cool product. I think that there's some improvements they could make, like I said, but overall, this is the rocket book everyday planner. This is the executive size. They have a larger eight and a half by 11 version. But I like this one because it matches the size of some of the other ones that I've normally carried with me. So very cool product. We're going to keep moving right along. <laughs> I'm going to pull the next one up on the carousel and I, I'll pull my notes up on it too because it is actually kind of funny. And I'll get that and I'll do one quick sweep of the chat. But again, that was the Everyday Planner. It does have 20% off right now. So it's $30.43 is what I'm seeing here. And Jeremy says, sounds like a great book for my list of co-conspirators. Yes, yes. I have some of those myself. <laughs> Books, not conspirators, right? <laughs> I love it, man. Okay, so we're going to pull up the next item here. And I've got to pull it up as well. And I'm going to move some of these things out of the way. Uh, I really like that you give us the good and not so good. I really appreciate it. Busy says, Busy, thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. I, I try to be honest with everything I buy. If there's something that they could improve upon, again, I do this in all of my reviews everywhere, so you'll see that. Uh, and I do appreciate companies, and I'll let you know if they sent the product to me for free, which is awesome. Uh, speaking of that, this next product is a dog training collar. Now, I say training collar. <laughs> it is not a shock collar. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I wish that dog had a shock collar. It's a training device. This is not meant to stay on your pet 24-7. And this is actually made by the NBJU company. I'm pulling this up right now. Um, this training collar is super, super important if you have one of those boisterous dogs that likes to uh, <laughs> make a lot of noise. We have some neighbors, and I was that neighbor for a while that had the barking dog. Uh, we have neighbors on both sides now that have the constantly barking dog, and I've seen it on the neighbor's app. 
you know, where people complain about the neighborhood dogs. In our neighborhood, it's actually not legal if the dog is barking for more than 10 minutes continuously. You have to bring him in or, or quiet the dog down. Otherwise, you can get fined as a pet owner. So the idea here is not to give your pet PTSD. Now, it's not a shock collar, but it does deliver electrical stimulation, let's call it. Uh, I'm going to unbox it here for you guys so you can see what's in it. And then I'm going to bring out my lovely assistant, which you're going to, I think you're going to get a <laughs> kick out of. Now, don't forget the quick setup guide is there in the bottom. So quick setup card is going to tell you everything about how to use it. It's got many different levels of sensitivity as well as different levels of intensity. So there's the quick setup guide right there. Uh, all the stuff is tightly packed in here. I'm going to open that kit here in a second. It does come with a micro USB charging. That's a little bit antiquated nowadays i would say but that's the micro usb cable and it is labeled specifically uh, from this company and i think on the label it's basically there's customer support information but you want to be really careful so this thing is waterproof if you use it with everything connected properly and i'll get into that here in a second there is a longer guide on how to use it with all the features and capabilities right here um, that it comes with this is many many pages See if I can pull it out here. Uh, I think it's even in multiple languages. Did I see it on that? I don't remember if I saw that on this one. No, this one is just the double-sided English only on this, which is great. But, oh, or is that? Nope, that's not French. That's just legalese. <laughs> uh, so this is all of the steps and information about it. I'm going to make this easy on you. You don't have to read this. I'll show you everything about it right now. Uh, so if you do have a pet, and you do have a pet that barks, and you are trying to work with that pet... Um, but you can't be physically holding that pet, reassuring them. You know, maybe you have a dog with high anxiety. We had a dog with high anxiety. And unfortunately, I had to give her away eventually because of just the continuous barking when we had lots of visitors over. Um, and she even went after, uh, you know, one of the neighbors that we had, you know, barking and growling. And that can, you know, get your dog in serious trouble. So having something like this is, again, a training device. It's not punishment. It's not to be used if you read through all their instructions here. And these are well labeled. This is actually says here right on here. Never connect a lit lead to the electronic collar will cause excessive pressure on contact. So they don't want you to hook your leash. I think they made lead <laughs> onto this because it is going to pull on those contacts against your dog's neck. So always use it with another collar if you're doing that. Never leave on your dog over 12 hours per day better within six hours again it's a training device it's not meant to be a permanent fixture on your dog's neck and reposition every one to two hours so you know you're going to have to have this with some amount of pressure for these contacts to actually do their job but the important part there is that they need to move around now another interesting thing about pet collars smart pet devices like this um that's one size fits all but there's many many different necks and different dogs out there you know so I'm going to take these out. These are some of the things that they include. Now, this is a test tool and a tool to tighten those probes, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. These are silicone covers. So if you want to use this training collar, but you don't want to have any electrical impulse at all, you can just cover those up. So you can cover these up either when not in use or depending on the, you know, getting the right size over these probes, you just simply slide them over here and that's going to improve the comfort here, and that's not going to induce any shock. Where you might want to use that, oh, we've had one of these collars with our dog previously. We get down to the beach, and the dog's all wet, and all of a sudden, you know, starts barking or something happens, and those will have much, much better contact, and the dog gets more of a jolt than you would want. Uh, again, it's really just about to remember. You want the, the pet to remember the commands and the things you're working. You don't want to injure them in any way. Now, this won't injure your animal, but again, it is uncomfortable when it's set to the higher settings, and so that's... Again, one of the things you can do. So this device right here, what I'm showing you that they're including can actually tighten and loosen these prongs and you can actually put the longer version. So if you've got a big dog with a thick coat, you might need to upgrade to the longer prongs that they have. So this coming you know, out of the box comes with the smaller ones. Super duper easy to use. Uh, again, well, I'll show you how I got this set up here. There we go. So I held down. Now I want to find the best lighting for this, and it may be on the side camera here. So again, this is the device. 
we'll put the picture in a picture. Now I got the white one here and I'm going to go ahead and tap this. So what you can see, and hopefully you guys can see that there, that's a six. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling it to review the settings with me. Now, unfortunately, yeah, with that camera angle, sorry about that guys. So that's the volume, the volume's three. Uh, that is the, the pulse that it's going to have. So that was the setting of six and there's the strength. And I'm going to go back over to the top cam, see if it's going to improve any here. If I turn this a little bit, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah, that camera and that large light, let me turn off the large light here and see if this will help out a little bit. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting the sensitivity. So when you turn it on, you need to tap the left one three times. That's the most confusing thing. So there's two buttons. There's an up button and an M button. When you bring this up, that's going to be the settings. Tap left three times. That keeps your kids from adjusting this on you. Now to go review the settings, you can hit the up arrow and change them. Now the first one that comes up, and again, that's the S, is the sensitivity. So sensitivity is three on this one. Now if you don't do this quickly, it's going to pass right by you there. So I left it at three. I'm going to make the vibration five in intensity. And then I'm going to make the electrical down to three in intensity. And let me go back out to the main camera here. Hopefully you guys can see that here. So the way you test this is actually pretty simple. If you take this and you just blow on it, it's going to vibrate. So blow on the back. Now made that audio warning, it's vibrating in my hand and then it's going to do the pulse. Now, because again, I wouldn't put this on an animal unless you have it and I would calibrate it. If you've tried it yourself, I'm going to let it vibrate and I'm going to let it send a pulse through the back of my hand there. Now it's not comfortable. That was three and you could barely feel it. If you put it on the bottom side of your hand too, like on your thumb here, um, that works better. So best way to test is to put it on your neck and bark, uh, I don't know if that's the best way I would, I would recommend skipping that uh, unless you're PC tech hustle. So I have brought a uh, assistant with me here <laughs> to show you how we can size this thing. Uh, and I don't have to bark at it, <laughs> but no, the easiest thing to do is to literally just blow on the back of the unit. That's all it does. Now the sensitivity, if this is not vibrating, it's not doing that audio cue and it's not going off, then you need to increase the sensitivity. That's the first number in the programming. Um, if you want to increase the vibration, and honestly, the vibration is all it should take. So this is a little bit tight here on my uh, stallion. <laughs> this is my, my guest stand in here. Hopefully you guys can see that. <laughs> and again, you can see the unit there. I can turn it on. I can cycle through the different stuff here. So it's going to have the first number that we'll come up with is actually, you'll see that was six. That's actually the battery level. So it's hard to see on these. Unfortunately, my cameras are not calibrated for this today, uh, but that's the battery level that you can see. It's going to have a one through seven battery level. It's going to have all day battery life, which is really cool. So uh, again, if you do need to resize this really, really simple, it works between eight inch circumference neck and 25 inch so if your dog's got a 25 inch neck we need to talk because i want to know what that is uh double buckle adjustment jeremy's asking us uh i don't know on that uh if that's what you would call this i'm not an expert when it comes to buckles and belts but uh essentially i'll show you at the lowest side setting you can actually cut this this material can be cut and you can you know i would heat up a knife or something and and or heat up the end and let that fuse back it looks like a nylon but if you do need to make this shorter, you can obviously bring it down, slide this down, slide this through, do that. Um, so that's the adjustability that you've got here. And when I say that this thing adjusts far out, it's practically be a belt for me at this point. So that's what it adjusts all the way out to. So your dog can have a neck that is even a little bit bigger than this if I adjust it a bit more. So pretty large neck on the dog there, 25 inch diameter circumference circumference we'll have to figure out what the diameter is in there uh carlos says i bet shrek would have loved this collar for donkey i don't know if i have a donkey upstairs <laughs> i had a bunny but that didn't seem appropriate so i uh, brought this guy down to test so again this is far too loose easiest way to fix that take it off here we're going to slide this down 
get it down to the size that you think it needs to be. And then you can pull out all the excess. I think that's going to be close. Nope, that's a little too tight. So again, I slide that down a little bit, slide this down. And like I said, I would use this on myself first, not on my neck, obviously, um, to test it out before you use it on any animal. And, and we've used this. Again, it's a training aid while you're there. It's not to keep on your dog 24-7. Let me show you one other cool thing about it. It is rechargeable, so you're not going to be buying tons of batteries for this. So this is a little waterproof cover that you have to put back on. That's where that micro USB comes in. So you got a little micro USB port there. And that's what you're going to want to use to charge it. And when you're done, make sure that's all the way down because that's going to get water intrusion. That would be the easiest way for this thing to fail. Um, I am working with somebody else to actually test this on their animal. Hopefully they'll show up here in the chat. Maybe we can say hi. Uh, but what we will do is we're going to test it on their animal and I'll get some better pictures and you'll see a review video coming out here shortly about this. But I did want to thank the company for sending this out for a demonstration for you guys. If you are a pet owner, Let's go take a look at this right now. They've got this thing on 28% off. So normally these things, if you've been to a pet store, are pretty expensive. Very expensive here. Um, I've got here 28% off, $35.99. And I actually bought the other one to get do as a giveaway. So I bought another one here. It is the number one bestseller in bark collars right now. And the rating on it is 4 out of 5. So you can see that right there comes in a ton of colors. I happen to have the white one here, which apparently is not great for showing the numbers on screen, which is unfortunate, uh, but a very good product overall. Uh, green teal there got a vibrant orange teal blue. They're calling it the dark blue. That's a cool looking color. And then you've got white. So you got the, all of those covered here. Um, it is an IP67 rated when you have it closed, charges in only 30 minutes, and works for about 12 days. So that's pretty cool. Now you can use other training collars like this one here that's a remote training collar, other ones like that. This one specifically is sound activated. So there is no way to turn off the sound activation. That's the main purpose of it. Again, it's not meant to be on your pet permanently. Again, 12 hours a day max, 6 hours a day would be even better or less while you're working with them and hopefully someday you know that anxiety will come down and you won't have to use this with your pet all the time but we've worked with some pretty good pet trainers and they've even recommended the manual ones while you're training that did have electrical stimulation because animals do not you know respond uh, especially when they're agitated or not paying attention and that does get their attention for sure not meant to hurt it meant to train so very cool. If you have questions about this, let me know. We're going to skip on to our next product here. One of my favorite products that I've used recently. I'm going to get this cleaned up and put away. We've covered most of the items here. I just want to double check that I haven't left anything out. Again, super easy to use. I'm not a cat person, so I would say you totally want to use this on a noisy cat too, I think. That might help. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> So I'm going to put that out of the way for a second. I'm going to double check the chat here. So Jeremy's clearing up. He says that is not bu double buckle. Remote is good for training more than just barking. So yeah, the remote one would be good if you're working with training on commands, right? So um, that's the ones we've used previously. And uh, what do you think if we keep my co-pilot up here? Should we keep... They said never in show business work with... What is it? Kids or pets? And I've got at least the first half covered here. So that's going to be our demo <laughs> right there. I'll put him down and we're going to pull up the next product. I'm going to double check one more time. And we're going to go quickly here to the next product. And this is a dash cam. This thing is so cool. I used it this weekend and we've got some really, really neat footage, but I also wanted to show you guys real quick. Some of the neat things, capabilities that it has. I'm going to do an unboxing of it. This is from the company called 70 my MAI and I've already posted on discord a few of the pictures and some people were just like, wow, you know <laughs> what this thing can do, the telemetry, the really, really neat advanced features, really exciting stuff that it has built into it. I'm going to turn my lighting back on just so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to go to the top down view. And again, I mentioned this was from 70 my, this is a dash cam. Um, actually, you know what? I put my opener down to the side. We're going to be really careful. 
Uh, from a packaging perspective, they're trying to outdo Apple here. Definitely some nice packaging. If this is something that you were considering as a gift for maybe a younger driver in your house, spouse, mother-in-law, you know, mother, uh, really good option. Again, super cool packaging. The features on this are where it really, really shines though. So this is how small this is. You know, probably like the size of a pepper spray canister. Not super big. Now I've had other dash cams that are similar, you know, with all the attachments, they hang down in your window. The whole thing about this is it's very, very small. No screen. That's another interesting thing about this one. No buttons. It's got a single button, meaning you can't screw it up. <laughs> and that's what I really like about this one. So that's what you're getting. It does have a cover on top of the lens. So make sure that you're looking for that. As we open it up further, you're going to see that it has a car charger, cigarette lighter charger port. I'm going to show you some other neat options here, but it has one port for the unit itself and it has another port for a cell phone or another type of charger. So um, that's really useful to have as well. In here, this is the neat part about it. This is the way that it mounts to your window. Now I thought, oh, I, you know, this couldn't be uh, a good mounting system that they've got, but you can see how compact it is. Now, if I twist down, it's actually designed to mount like this. So it's hard to see that with a top down camera. If I twist down, it's meant to mount up against your glass. So it's pretty low profile in the mounting. And what you do is you line up the two arrows. So there's two arrows on here. So you've got those. That's how you have to put it in. And I have to double check myself. So you want to line it up so those two arrows are going to each other. Now, what I've done when I do that is my dash cam is facing forward now and my charging port is out the side. So this can be plugged in, hardwired, or done whatever we want. The capability and features of this thing get really cool from here on out. Now, as far as cords, it has a long cord on this side. I'm not going to unravel this one because I'm going to use that later. I have another one, a demo model that I can pull out for us. But um, this cord's probably eight, nine feet long. So you can run this wherever you need to. They also have another kit for you if you want um, that they can use to move this between a vehicle to another vehicle. So if you install it and you change your mind, you sell that vehicle, there's going to be some stuff here I'm going to show you. This is a prying tool. This is if you need to get it off of the windshield, you can slide this under. They have a very unique mounting system that I haven't seen before. So they're going to include an extra adhesive pad, and it's going to go with the next piece that I'm going to show you here, which is inside with the instruction manual is the mounting so this mounting system uses this clear it's not cellophane it's uh, just a really really simple clear plastic i'm gonna show it to you here so it's super clean and you peel off this strip it doesn't actually it's electrostatic that's what it is that's how it mounts to your windshield and it'll stay on there mounted electrostatically but there's enough here to do a two-car installation uh, before you have to do anything else custom so i have some installation video i'll show you but i want to show you the output of this dash cam because i think that's even cooler so let me pull that up real quick uh we're gonna go over here and i had a close call this weekend which was kind of interesting and i actually caught it on the dash cam i was so excited to show that dash cams are incredibly important not only for your own safety but safety of kids that are driving safety of loved ones my wife got in an accident it took over an hour and a half for the police to show up and they never came. They eventually called us and said, well, since nobody's injured, just fill out a, an incident report and we'll take care of it. When, you know, she was not at fault by any means in that collision, anybody that could have seen it would have known that. But in this circumstance, she called in and the guy had already called his insurance and told him it was her fault and, you know, tried that play. A dash cam will help cut down on that. It helps cut down on your stress. If you have a teenage driver, it helps to improve honesty. <laughs> and I'll show you some of the, the cool capabilities that it has here. Um, I was driving, let me go over here. In Washington State, we have lots of cool bridges. Let me pull this up. So I was driving across a bridge here in Washington State. This is the Hood Canal Bridge. And this goes across. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's the quality that you're getting. Now, my Amazon feed is only going to be 720p. So you're not going to really see 
the high quality that this thing has, but it's actually keeping track of my miles per hour. If I get myself out of there, it's keeping track of my longitude and my latitude here. Super, super clear video. And now there's a little bit of reflection off my dash. My car is unique. It has a really, really flat uh, roof, but you can see the frame rate in there. This is a 1440p version of their dash cam. Now, are you going to be able to pick out license plates? No, not a lot of them can. It's not like CSI where you zoom into the license plate, but I'll show you what this thing does have, which is much more unique uh, on here. And that is the ability to track moving objects. So it has advanced driver safety features. So once you get this thing installed properly, you can see now somebody asked, they said, oh, is it tracking their speed? No, it's tracking their distance. I didn't know that at first, but you see it's showing me keeping in the center of my lane. When you set it up, it'll walk you through a calibration process. It's also keeping track of the roll angle, pitch angle. You can see we're going uphill here. So the car is pitching up direction of travel, G forces that are going on. It's doing all of that and it's doing it real time. So you can see here now this HUD, this heads up display doesn't exist on your phone or the device doesn't have a screen at all, but it does have that advanced computation that's going on. And those are distances. So you can see that one car is 90 meters away. Now it's moved along, but that other place was about 49 meters away is what it was tracking. So really, really cool capability on here. Uh, I love that. And Jeremy says, enhance, enhance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is really cool. Probably one of the most advanced dash cams I've seen. Now I got to show you the, the footage of the near miss because that was really interesting too. And I apologize if you are a WRX driver. Now, I don't know if you can see this already, but we're driving along. There's a light amount of rain coming. That's why I've got the wipers on here and you can see coming towards me. Now I've zoomed this in just a little bit because this thing has a 170 degree wide angle. I had to zoom it in a little bit. But those are headlights in my lane, three cars, three car lengths away in there. And I'll play it real time here. So that's how fast it happened. I was already on the shoulder because I drive way ahead. Now you can see here when that last car goes by me, he's still all the way in my lane. Any guesses as to the driver on this one? I'll give you there. No license plate yet, but uh, yeah, you can tell what kind of car that is. <laughs> That's totally a boy racer right there. You, you can say in the chat if you know it. Uh, this will be a little trivia game here. But, you know, I, I went over there and on Twitter. I said, hey, if you're going to drive this kind of car, you at least need to get a faster car because that could have been a really bad accident. You know, so if something happened, if I had to go off into a ditch and they come after later and they find me in the ditch and they think I just fell asleep at the wheel or something else happened, we can go back on this dash cam and see exactly what went on. So that's why these things are so important that, Hey, maybe I got ran off the road. Maybe my teenager, you know, said, Hey, you know, this person ran me off the road. That's why the side of my car is all beat up. Then, you know, and maybe you have a recourse and can help find these people. So really, really cool capability that it has there. I want to show you some other neat things and then we'll get into the app and you can see how that works because I've just been shocked with this thing and the capability. So this is the route replay capability. So if you do have a teenager, you can see here, this was our road trip and how we kicked it off. We were literally driving along. <laughs> And going down the freeway, it has our maximum speed at 108 kp or km, uh, you know, uh, per hour. Now we don't go by those. We do on freedom units, miles per hour. That was the one thing that I thought was interesting about the software is I could do the replays, but it was always in kms, and I went through all the settings, and I could not find a way to change that setting to miles per hour. You can change some of the other stuff on the display to miles per hour, but that's the one setting in the replay that, that didn't seem to be accessible. So let me just double check my notes and make sure I've given you all the cool overviews of it. Then I'm going to show you one more feature that it also has that I thought was really slick. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot about this one. Uh, another thing that you'll notice that this thing does not have conspicuously is an SD card slot. You know, normally you buy a nice dash cam, you got to spend another 15, 20, $30 or more on a high capacity endurance memory card, something that's going to stand up to the heat. This actually has eMMC storage. Now eMMC storage on a laptop, no good on one of these pretty cool because it's built in. This version just happens to be 64 gigabytes. Now let me pull it up real quick here. I want to give you the right values here. Um, so uh, 99 99 right now, I believe, and we'll come into that is the 32 gigabyte. It comes in 32, 64, 128 gig on the device itself. 
good and bad. Like I wanted to plug the device in and just download all the files, but you can't do that. You have to use the app and the app can be slow at some times when you're downloading large files and the app will tell you that because it's doing it all over Wi-Fi. but you have that capability to be on scene and not have to fumble through the buttons. That's another thing. If you look at some of their competitors devices, you know, my mom, <laughs> she calls me every time it's time to use a computer. Can you tell looking at that dash cam, which one is the play and which is the delete? Because I couldn't, this is the competitor's dash cam that I had before and I quit using it. Honestly, that thing was so hard to use. Um, it would unplug constantly, but this thing's super duper easy, tons and tons of features in there as well. So I want to show you that there's one other feature here. This one's got audio and I don't know if it's going to come through. And if it does come through knowing my luck, it'll probably be super loud. So let's see how this works. Let me know if you guys can hear this. I'm going to go into that input and that'll help. So this is something I want to show you. It's a lane keeping assist feature that this has. Uh, one of the only ones I've seen in a dash cam that can do this. I've got cars that I've seen that can do this, that have thousands and thousands of dollars of telemetry and stuff. But this is doing this all with that video. And I'm going to go ahead and be quiet here. And hopefully you can hear me and my wife talking and what it does. I just started. Lane departure. Lane departure. Lane departure. Okay. I just start. So hopefully you guys heard that. That was actually the dash cam itself saying that it did not, it, that it saw me leaving the lane. So lane departure. Now it's kind of funny because in a car, if you do that with your steering wheel, cause you're changing lanes and you have the signal on, it knows not to say something in your car. If you've got your turn signal on, if you're drifting and you don't have the turn signal on, most of them will complain. This thing will complain when you change lanes. You know, when you just do a regular lane change, yes, it does say, Hey, lane departure, which you kind of have to deal with, but you know what? Very, very cool feature. I had never seen this before. Um, yeah, Jeremy says that could get annoying. It could, but you know, for a new driver or somebody like that, I would like them to have this just if they're starting to get distracted, they're looking over and now it says, Hey, lane departure warning. It's like, okay, that's pretty cool. It also has stop and start. So if a car stops short in front of you, it's going to say caution traffic ahead. It also has passenger detect or not passenger. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah, there's a passenger. No, uh, it has pedestrian detection, which is a really neat feature. So I was going through a Safeway parking lot and people are walking around. Some guy walks out in front of a car and it's like pedestrian detected. It's like, okay, cool. One thing I would say that could be a, an improvement, and I got an early production unit on this, so I've been getting firmware like every week, it feels like. But uh, one thing that could be an improvement is if they just did an audio prompt, like my Explorer has collision detection, forward collision, and it just it's, it does a bright light and it makes an audio prompt. It doesn't have any verbal stuff. So um, that would be a neat thing if they could do a audio buzz or something to show you that right away. That would be good for me because uh, by the time you actually hear, you know, person detected, you know, that's a, a second or two to process that. I'm going to pull out the one that I already have and I'm going to plug it in and let you guys see that. Um, one other drawback on this one, not that it's much, but one other thing that would be nice is if this came in a two camera model, because I would love to have a rear facing version of this. I'm actually thinking of installing both in the same car. Tell me if that's like a crazy idea. Um, so it has, again, I'm going to pull this stuff out here. This is the one I've already been using. Remember to take off that front lens cover. I was the guy that forgot to do that. <laughs> Uh, this is going to be that long USB cord and let's do a quick measurement on that. And then I'm going to show you how I installed it in my car. That was actually a pretty cool thing. I know this section's a little bit long if you haven't dealt with dash cams before, but this one's pretty cool. I have to say, so that was six feet already. I guessed nine on this and I might be wrong. Okay. It's got a 12 foot cable. So I don't know where you have to get power or plug in at, but this one's going to have a 12 foot USB cable and it's USB C. So you don't have to worry about which direction you put it in. I'm going to go ahead and plug it into a regular USB outlet on the wall. I'm going to fire it up and then I'm going to fire the app up so you guys can see that. And then I'm going to try to position it somewhat towards me so that you guys can see my smiling face. Um, it does have automatic power off, which is nice. It's just saying right now, starting to record video, which is nice. Now, if you bump it, I'm going to see if I can get this 
I might actually have to install it. That'll be an interesting thing. No, I'm going to see if I can put this in a way. So it said start recording emergency video on me because I've bumped it around too many times. It does have that sensing capability. So if you do bump it too much, I'm going to bring up that app split again on the side for you here. So this is my cell phone here. I'm going to go back out. This is the app, really easy to use. Another cool thing about this one is it's going to have your Google uh, account connection there. So you don't have to set up another security account. You don't have to give them a password that might be something that's reusable. One of the really cool things um, that I like about this is that it does have that Google integration, the OAuth integration, they call it. So really, really slick there. Uh, first thing it does is Bluetooth wise, it turns the Wi-Fi hotspot on on it. So it creates its own little Wi-Fi hotspot, no internet access, obviously. And then it's going to connect to that. Now I've had a couple problems with this phone connecting to it reliably it looks like it went in through right there it's telling you that the voice and power key will be disabled while the app is accessing the dash cam which is understandable so you can't really do the voice commands there are some pretty cool voice commands you can do um like we were talking about the lord of the rings and the thing took a picture and we're like how did that happen i'll tell you about it here in a second it was really fun <laughs> but you can see the picture that's coming out of the dash cam now this is the low resolution preview so if I go full screen, and I don't know if this is going to rotate. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't rotate with this adapter in. So it looks like it did not rotate with the adapter. So um, that is the preview mode that it has here. Uh, but if I go into album, I can actually see prior videos and prior photos in here. So hopefully that will pull up here now. I have not done this with this phone yet, so we're going to see if it likes this. Oh, not able to pull it up at the moment. See if I can get this to pull up. So that emergency video that it recorded goes into a category. So it's starting to record the video when I pulled that up. So those are the, the ways that you access it. If you if you want to access the routes, let me get, let me get back here and I'll show you the homepage there. So if you do want to see the driving routes, you can go into the driving route area. And this is where it'll synchronize the GPS off of this unit to where the, the thing has been. The neat thing is you don't have to have your phone in the car. So if you have a teen driver and they're supposed to be driving safely, you can actually go in here and synchronize the data and see all the times the car was used, especially if you do a hardwire kit. That would be a recommended thing on this. Um, does have some other neat capabilities I want to bring up. Uh, one of those is a hardwire kit option. So if you want to do parking surveillance, kind of like your own mini Tesla, you can do that but you're going to need to use the hardware kit on this. So that's the unit. It's going to have auto power off. This is the other thing that the other dash cams I have, they would stay on, they would stay plugged into your USB port and they would drain your car. Like I've parked for with, you know, this recent pandemic that we've had, you know, uh, I've parked the car for two weeks at a time and the dash cam would not shut off. And so the one that's already got the screen on it, that's already burning more power, fumbling through the buttons, trying to use it. This one will do an automatic turn off and you can set it. If you don't see any activity or motion in the screen, like I'm parked, turn yourself off. And then when it comes back on, it will start recording immediately, which is pretty cool. Um, that brings us to the next piece, which is the hard wiring adapter kit. And I'm going to clean up this area just a little bit, and then we'll come back into this. <laughs> it's saying start record emergency video. Um, you can push the button on here. You can give it voice commands. You can say, take a photo, take a photo. I don't know if you guys heard that, but <laughs> it was taking a photo. You can also say, take a Frodo. That's Frodo Baggins for anybody. That's what we figured out as we said something about Frodo and it decided to take one. But so the voice commands are not great. Um, you may or may not want to turn them off. I think they're getting better, um, but that's another thing. And you can set the G forces required so that when, you know, if it gets bumped or hit or somebody bumps into your car, you know, in a parking lot, you know, what level of intensity it needs before it starts recording automatically. So that's going to be a marked video when it does that. So it's telling me now it's recording an emergency video, but that's going to be a different kind of recording that it's going to have. It's going to pop up differently on your timeline, but it will record 24 seven. And with that online recording, we'll pull it up on their website here in a second, but it will talk about how long it can record for. Um, this is another cool option. This is their hard wire kit. So it's going to have your standard three wires now, not a USB, uh, which is pretty cool way to install this. So if you're looking at this kit, so the way that this works very, very simply, it's going to have the USB-C on one end that you can see right there. 
it's going to have this little adapter capability that they have and then it's going to have the power accessory and ground so your accessory you plug into something that turns on and off uh, power to voltage plus that's always on and what's neat about this is it's going to automatically know when the car is occupied and when it's not that way not very hard to install let me actually show you guys how the installation of this works <laughs> and i'll pull it up here on the side you can see that so this is actually me with my car and this is how i did the installation now there's no audio on this one and i'll probably go pretty fast but what i did is i kind of spotted where i think i want it and then the unit you again line those two pieces up and you can put it up there now i made the mistake of putting it too close the first time just so you know uh, you don't want to make the same mistake i did and i'll cover this in the full review video but you have to put that um i'm going through the products that they have here so you put that clear static plastic film up and so once i put the static film up there and I, I tucked it in the corner i didn't realize and you can see it's very transparent optically transparent i did not realize that this was going to be too close to the side nice ferrari <laughs> wait till you see what this car is you wouldn't be saying that it's pretty funny so there's the the usb-c and I'm, I'm tucking it in the cool thing about that with the, that little spudger they give you you can actually remove it and reinstall it as necessary let me take a drink here Now I fuddled with this for a little while, but this is exactly how you can hide the cords and the wires on these above your headliner. There's usually a lot of room and it's really easy to tuck. And then in this area, this is called your a pillar on a car that pops off completely on mine. There's airbags in there. So be careful, but that will actually just lift up a little bit. And all of those gaskets I'll show you here in a second, you can just move those. So I lined this up. I ran the wire. I plugged it in just to do some testing. And then you can see I ran that along the side of my car there. It's a very dirty car, but I cleaned it after this. So <laughs> this is how you can, again, run it past the glove box. So I ran it in the glove box. I played around a little bit here to see if I could move that trim up a little bit and get it really tucked in. But what I wanted to so I was going to head that way and go to the A pillar. Um, and actually, there's a little wing window on this little car that I have. So I you know, was going to go past that and go up. And then I realized, why don't I just take the trim off here? So this is, again, right along the, the door pillar. Just pulling off that weather gasketing gives you a perfect channel to run your wires up. And so I was able to run it all the way up, tucking it completely. And then I pull back that A-pillar plastic. It takes a little while. And then I, I get it in there. I'm going to show you this. It's so cool. When you see the final product, there's a little bit of cord showing there when the doors open but the rest of it is completely hidden and just comes out where you want it. So again, that's the included 12 feet of cord that they include with this thing. Installation couldn't be any easier. They also include an extra static cling and an extra adhesive tab. If you sell the car and need to move it, so you don't have to worry about that, but you can reposition it and you'll see me actually here in just a second. I got my app out and I started using it. And then I realized I was like, Oh, I'm, I'm seeing too much. You see on that screen there, I'm seeing too much of that big column that's in the center of my windshield for some reason on this car. And so I was able to reposition it and get it out of the way and make it work better. And then here's where you turn on the advanced driving aids. That's the advanced safety stuff and the other features that it has. So I was able to do that. And then there you can see the, the view that it's getting didn't like where it was. So I actually repositioned it down. You can see, let me show you here how I peeled it off. I thought, oh man, this thing's never coming off. My other ones have a permanent 3M mount to my window. I'm, I'd destroy them trying to take them off. I'd have to get new 3M glue and everything. I took this electrostatically, moved it down a little bit. And I said, you know what? That's too far in my view. That's a little bit too close. The view was great, but it was a little bit too, you know, obstructing. So I moved it up a little bit higher and there you go. And that's what I kind of finally settled on there. And that's my view and that's my GoPro. <laughs> and then I was like, why is there a little bit of a haze to it? This thing is 2.7K, so it's better than full HD. And it's because of that little tiny sensor right there had the cover on it still. So don't make the same mistake I did. Uh, and I took that and put it back on there. So I want to go over to the Amazon page for this. Again, this is John the Net Guy. If you're just joining, we're taking a look at a really cool product. <laughs> Uh, I'm just pulling up the items here. We'll go into the hardware kit in just a second. Uh, one of the best prices I've seen on a dash cam. It's a single lens, single camera dash cam. There are other ones that have multiple, but one of the best capabilities I've seen here, 
is Android and PC compatible, which is, sorry, not PC, Android and iOS compatible, doesn't work with your PC directly, has the built-in GPS capabilities, it's got the GLONASS and other stuff, so the Russian version of GPS, if you need that to get better access, so it's pretty cool. Um, it does have a 1944p resolution, but that's only on 4x3 aspect ratio. So if you want to play these back in full widescreen, go into the settings and set them to a 16x9. You're going to get about 1440p, so it's a little bit less overall pixels. But in the end, I think it's a better unit. Um, it looks like they only have the 64 and the 32. They don't have the other one available yet. Let me pull up the pictures here so I can show you that real fast. So this is what I was talking about on resolution. So the resolution is 1944 but that's on a four by three. So if you change it, it's going to go to like 1490 ish. Um, so it does have HDR support. I was not able to capture footage in the evening on this. I apologize. We'll put that in the long video there as well. Taking a look at it, it does have that 170 degree coverage. Sometimes it would be nice if it was a little bit less, you know, uh, wide because you get a little bit more detail. But, you know, when you're in a parking area and you need to see a large area, or if a car is coming out of an area that ran a stop sign or something, you need to be able to see that. 170 is pretty common and nice for dash cams for sure. Uh, it does have, with the optional hardware kit, you can't leave it on 24-7 without this hardware kit. But this hardware kit that they've sent me to, I'm going to show the installation on that. I'm super excited about this because it unlocks a couple capabilities. You get time-lapse capability, so it'll do an automatic time-lapse for your car. So if you want to have that kind of capability, and it's going to do all of that sentry mode capability where it's going to have the parking modes. And it, it does not use much. I'll show you how much it uses here in just a little bit. Um, as far as storage, this is the one I wanted to get to because this is the important thing. So they're, I believe, using H.265 encoding in this. They don't tell me in where I, the documentation I've seen, but they're getting some incredible storage times here. So you're already going to get over three days of recording continuously with a 32 gig, so the $99 version. For nine bucks, I'd spring for the 64. You know, that would be really good to have. And that one you can see is, oh gosh, almost a week um <laughs> or more somebody do the math on that but uh, and then the 128 is not in stock right now but that's just outstanding so very very happy with this this is the emmc storage they were talking about so you don't have to buy anything else that was another cool thing about this uh, if you're a parent if you're a spouse of anybody who drives and you want that freedom of not having to worry about if there was an accident or scratch something happened to a car um you know if you lease a car you know, and they're trying to say something that you did, I would definitely have one of these. So lots of really cool features on this one. I bought a second one of these, honestly, because it worked so well. I wanted to have another angle. So you can see here two days ago, I bought a, that second one that we just unboxed together. Really, really happy with this. Let's talk about that hardware kit. I need to bring that up on Amazon and I need to check again for you here. Uh, somebody for some reason is putting a, <laughs> uh, you know, a uh, SD card with this, but that's not what you need. Uh, can you change it to feet instead of meters? Carlos is asking on the dash cam. You can change it to miles per hour in the overlay, but you can't change the feet and meters. That's something that they'll probably add in the app or firmware. Um, should be fairly easy. As far as fairly water resistant for motorcycles, is it fairly water resistant? I don't know if this is water resistant. I didn't see that. And it has some pretty big vents in the back. It does generate some heat. Because uh, this thing, it's got a heck of a processor in it, whatever it is. So I, I have not uh, seen anything where it says water resistant. I'm guessing it's not. And again, you know, there's lots of other options for dash cams out there, but there's nothing I've seen that performs and delivers like this one has. I've been really, really happy with it. Uh, and I've used quite a few. This is just one of the dash cams we have in our cars. After that accident, it was a, a wake up kit, or not a wake up kit, a wake up call um, that we had with my wife because we didn't want to be in that position again, whereas he said, she said. So this is that hardware kit. I'm going to pull this up now just for giggles. And this one's 5% off right now. It's got free one day shipping on it. And this is what you're getting again in the kit. This is going to unlock the surveillance mode capability for this. It's going to free up a USB port. So even though they're also including a second USB port. So if you already have one that you plug your phone into, this one charged an iPhone just fine. Uh, I'm almost certain it's the 2.4 amp. So it's the, the higher speed charging. So, you know, that would be really good. Uh, but the hardware kit completely eliminates that. And you can have a dash cam that looks factory. 
you know, uh, in your car. So taking a look at the chat, if there are any questions real quick here, and we'll run from that. Kent B. Realty says, stay hydrated. I think I will. Hmm. Thank you guys. Um, again, that was from the 70 my company. They did send this thing out for a fair and honest review. I have to put that out. I did buy another one on my own dime though, uh, because it literally performed that well. I was so excited this weekend after using it that I wanted to do that. Let me bring up that, uh, near miss one more time. I didn't see anybody guess the model of car that was, <laughs> but I want to bring this up one more time just because. I thought it was so interesting and another reason to have a dash cam. I'm going to zoom it in a little bit and I'm going to get myself out of there. And then you guys can see this was on that dash cam and that's what I saw coming at me was headlights in my lane and this dash cam caught it. So again, in the rain, guys passing in an area that he shouldn't and you can see, I don't know how close that was. I didn't turn the, the distance measuring on. Yeah, he was in my lane right until about four car lengths there. So pretty scary. You know that that happened but again it was caught on dash cam and it could have been a lot worse uh carlos says smart car <laughs> uh can you view a drive while home jeremy's asking on this great question jeremy let me put that up here for everybody else um you can actually do that so a lot of the footage that i was reviewing if the, the device is on you have to plug it in on your usb kind of like i'm doing now as long as it's powered up it creates its own hot spot you connect right to it super duper easy and you can do that from multiple devices so i have my personal phone and then i have the show phone just so i don't get alerts while i'm doing this i'm going to see if i can connect to it one more time and show you that oh that connected so much faster that time so let me go to the album yeah so this thing's stopping recording i'm going to bring this up on the side take jeremy's question out okay so here was, you know, throughout the day, this was it in my office. There's some emergency recorded video that it's seeing here. So it's loading that right now. Now I can download any clip of these videos that I want. It's just loading into it right now. Let's see if I can just get over to the loop recording. I hope my mic is not messing with it because it's also 2.4 and I've got it on. There we go. So that's it. Just a few seconds ago, me talking away. I don't even know if you can actually hear that because I don't know if I have that pipe through. But it does have audio recording capabilities. That's another thing that's important on this. Um, in some states, you're not allowed to record audio, so you can turn that off if you want. So check up on the kids while they're gone. Uh, Joe says it looks like a Kia. That was a Subaru WRX that was passing me in the wrong lane. Um, they're actually a pretty decent car. It's just a bad driver, I guess. And now the photo resolution that comes out of these things is pretty epic, actually. Uh, photos out of this, you know, the quality I think is even higher than the full motion video. That's because there's a lot of compression going on here on the video. But it took a picture of yours truly when I said, take a photo. And it did that. Now it can't do it because we're, we're on there. So just wanted to check on that. Uh, and as far as my car, the one that I installed it in is my little electric car. I've got a, a hybrid electric, partially electric car. So I'm going to take a look at the Amazon chat, just see if there's anybody. And then we're going to get on to our last product of the day. And then we're going to do that drawing because uh, who does not like to give away stuff? Awesome. So getting back in here, see if there's any questions in the Amazon chat. Now this next one actually has a promo. Dave got it to Subaru WRX. He knew that right off the bat. <laughs> uh, yes. I'm not going to say anything about WRX drivers. I'll get banned. <laughs> uh, a link for the giveaway, not seeing in the description. Let me pull the giveaway up and I'm going to have it running the whole time. Carlos, thanks for checking in there, man. Um, enter the giveaway down there, the netguy.com. Oh, sorry. I have to unplug this thing. Um, it does have battery backup. I just want to point that out. So there's a built-in battery on this thing. So even if you can, yeah, you can see that green lights on it and it's saying that it's turning off. It's recording video. It's telling me all sorts of things. I was just unplugging it to turn it off, but it will sense when the power goes away and shut itself down, which is pretty cool, but it will record a video if it needs to, if it was an accident that caused the power to go away. It has enough battery on there to keep recording and do that for you, which is pretty cool. I'm going to pull up the next product here. I want to show you this one. Give me one second. Okay. Hope you guys can hear me still. I need to pull this one up in the 
system so I can show it to you. Now this is from a company called Orimo and they sent this one out for a fair and honest review. And this from Orimo is their portable vacuum. Now who needs a vacuum? Everybody. Uh, my studio right now, I'm a sunflower seed person. I'm seeing sunflower seeds down there. I'm going to show you what comes out of this right away. We'll do a quick unboxing and I'm going to get some of these other products out so people don't get confused. So this is what you get in it. It's got a HEPA filtered portable vacuum. Now this is USB type C charging with built in battery. And there's the instruction kit that comes with it. So this is the whole package from Arimo and very, very easy to operate. Now I can use it just like this. So I lock that in, turn it on. Now that's probably throwing my noise canceling on my mic all crazy, but that was it running. It's super quiet. I can actually run it down over here and I can keep talking to you guys. Um, I was trying to think of stuff that I should suck up with it. Like I can do some sunflower seeds, I guess, but um, I didn't want to use anything that would actually scratch it because it is so cool, but simple, easy to use other cool features that it's going to have um, got this extension. So you can get down in crevice. So it's got a crevice tool. It's going to have a brush tool that can go on the end of that crevice tool. So, Hey, let's say we're cleaning our laptop. Can do that over here. <laughs> I'm cleaning laptop screen. <laughs> Do do do. Gonna clean my laptop keyboard. So very cool capability on that. Another neat feature about this thing is again the USB charging port on it. So on the back bottom USB charging. Where do I want to use this thing? In the car. Uh, I think that's one of the best places for it. My wife loves to drag our big heavy vacuum down and try to use that thing under seats and around seats. I think this thing is perfect for that because it's USB-C charging. I'm going to go through here and I want to pull it up on Amazon just so I can show you guys real quick what this thing is. Now there is a special promo code that they did for me on this one for you guys. So on this one, you're going to get 10% off. And then I believe with the net guy, you're going to get an extra 10% off that. I don't quote me on that yet. I need to pull this up and see that's either that. Now this product already is pretty competitive with all of its competitors in the space. I think they saw my other uh, video I did for another competitor and their vacuum was priced much, much, much higher than this one it has the same features. Now you're not going to want to suck up anything wet with this. This is not a wet dry vacuum by any means. That's where I think it would work really well in the car. I'm going to pull the promo code here. Um, and it's got the promo code running right now. So you guys should be able to see the promo code. I'm going to return to live stream. Let me do that. Oh, there we go. Promo code is now active. So you guys can see this. So if you're on Amazon right now and you are searching for a really cool portable vacuum, rechargeable cordless vacuum, this is the one. Now, super easy to empty. Just hit the top button, ejects the back part of this. This is the removable HEPA filter part. Let me show you how that works. So again, just fits right down in there. Removable HEPA filter. Now I've got a little bit of dirt in there from using it. The neat thing about this is it's washable. So my wife was upstairs washing a non-washable filter the other day. I had to talk to her. This one is a washable HEPA filter. You can do this about 20 times, it says, before you have to wash it. Use it about 20 times. And then it said you can use it a total of about 50 times. So you get a couple extra uh, uses between washes there. Uh, fairly long USB cord on this one manual if you don't know how to use a vacuum probably shouldn't be around power tools uh let me show you some video of this thing though real quick because i used it on that little itty bitty car i've got and it worked really well um so again sorry for the shakiness of the video here but this is actually in the back seats where my kids love to throw stuff this is the crevice tool i'm coming along in there now i put the brush on here too because that actually kind of keeps it from getting stuck and i'm out there just grabbing all sorts of stuff out of here uh, I think my kids left a piece of pizza back there. So I loaded this thing up pretty quickly. And we're taking a look at the Rymo handheld vacuum cleaner. It's $39.99 right now. They are offering some promo codes. There's a 10% off 
and there's an additional code with the net guy. It changes. I don't know exactly how much it is right now. I know we were working that out, trying to get you the best discount they can. So on this show is one of the best prices that you're going to get right now on this. So, you know, I can, I went in there, I, I sucked up a zip tie. It looks like I had a wire tie. I took that brush off and it did really well. You can see I'm, I'm digging in behind seat crevices with this, which is really slick. So love that. And you can see the stuff moving around in there. You see it all kind of flopping around. There is a stopper in there. So when you shut it off, it will close and not drop anything. You don't have to worry about this. So as soon as you turn it off, it's not going to spill anywhere. Other places, this works really well in between the seats, around the seats. We were about to go on that little road trip. So I said, hey, why don't I clean the seats before we get out of there? My kids love to leave McDonald's and French fries. And then, like I said, I do like my sunflower seeds and they don't always make it in the bag. So, you know, sucking up some stuff. There's some wet, um, you know, needles and stuff there. I'm just using this, you know, again, for a quick cleanup. It's not going to be a, you know, a, a service station vacuum. It's not going to replace that. But, you know, in a few seconds, you can do a pretty good job on this thing pretty quickly. So, yeah, neat, neat features that it has. Has that ability to get way under things there. That's the seats in my little electric car. And right down in that crevice, look at that. So yeah, you're not going to fit my full-size vacuum cleaner wand in there. And that's what I really like about that small crevice tool. Uh, before I get you all sick, I'm going to throw the stuff that's in here out. Again, super simple. Push the button, take that part out, just pull the filter and dump everything out. And then I just bang the filter on the side to get all the stuff off. You don't have to wash it every time. That's another cool thing. So there's a little bit of hair or something caught on it. So I pulled that off and you drop it back in and then the thing's good to go. Now, what would have been nice on this is if you had some sort of carrying case. I could see that being really cool. But again, uh, didn't come with that. In the back of this little tiny car, there is not a lot of storage. There's a huge battery that they put in there. I was like, oh man, this would be a really cool spot if I had some like Velcro, some really strong double stick Velcro. I could totally throw this thing in this little cubby that I have on the side. And I thought that that would be really neat. But this is from the Orimo company, like I was mentioning. Um, this is their portable vacuum. I want to give you the stats. I don't want to make things up here, but I want to give you the stats that they're talking about as far as runtime. Let me go through here real quick. Uh, it does weigh only 1.4 pounds. I'm going to pull this up for you right now so you can see it. Definitely works well on pet hair. I found that out. No more dead corners. That's what it's saying for sure. Multiple ways for charge. Okay, 20 minutes of working time. Now, that may be a little bit long. All of these, that's kind of like on the far end. Um, Suction-wise, very decent suction compared to some of the other ones that I've used. Some of the other ones I used had like a turbo mode, but then the whole thing was done in like three minutes and you couldn't use it again. So this one's saying it's got a 20 minute working time uh, and it charges fully in three hours. I plugged it in and actually we could do that real quick now that I've used it a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. So this is uh, my little power supply. We can see how much it actually uses with this. Let's see what our draw is. And I will use any old charger. It does not come with a charger. But again, being USB-C, you can use just about anything these days. So I'm going to use the one that I have here. Now this is on 12 volts right now. So you're going to see the watts. I believe it's going to be about 6 watts charging. Let's see. It does not use a ton. Oh, that's through the conversion there. At 12 volts, it's using 9 watts. So about an amp and a half at 5 maybe. So 9 watts, uh, top of this thing is showing charging right now. So that's how it blinks. Again, in three hours, it'll be good to go. <laughs> Carlos says 100 amps, easily 100 amps. No, no, this thing charges pretty well. So you can see here on the screen, 9.2, it's charging that battery up. Again, I didn't use it much, so it's actually going to charge pretty quickly. It automatically shuts off. Cool thing about this, when I was in the car, I used it. I put it in the car under the seat, and I plugged it in under the seat to charge. So it can recharge itself while you're going somewhere, you get there and you got it fully charged again. So about three hours start to finish on the charging there, uh, again, from the Orimo company. So that is their vacuum. I'm going to double check on the pictures, make sure I didn't miss anything real quick here. It is not, <laughs> let me say that again. 
it is not water resistant here. So you're not going to be able to clean up a wet mess, which is normal for all of these things. Be really careful with that. You do have 10% off. And if you put in the code, the net guy, where do I put in codes on Amazon? You should ask. Um, when you're on the checkout screen, there's a gift card promo button area. There's that box put in the net guy. I'm sorry. I don't have it on the, the screen here, but if you put in the net guy, it will actually take off an additional percentage, uh, at least 5%, maybe even 10. We'll see. Um, let me know in the chat. If you guys do put it in there, show me how much that net guy code is taking off. Cause when I have it on my app, it's showing five and I think it might actually be higher now. Um, but this is one of the best selling ones that they have out here and works incredibly well from what I've seen. Again, reusable, washable HEPA filter, super small nozzle can get into tight spaces. They're showing here the other ones, 15 centimeters versus 22. That's true. This thing has a very good reach. Uh, getting underneath car seats, that's why I think this is so much better for the car than anywhere else. Getting way underneath car seats was pretty cool on that. Uh, double check in real quick and then we're going to do that giveaway i want to do that giveaway if you guys haven't done the giveaway yet the address is down below there holy cow so it's 25 total jeremy on there so i, I think my code's worth 15 percent um if that's correct mm. i think it's 25 with my code so i think it's 10 percent if you clip their uh, thing and it stacks with mine so if you do decide to pick this up for yourself or a loved one, you're going to get a good deal on it right now, 25% uh, off it sounds like. And there's the reusable part that we're talking about. Compared to one of the other ones that I showed, let's see, <laughs> Jeremy is showing the whole price here. Uh, coupon savings was 4 bucks, and 25% off was $10 more off, so he's able to get it for $25.99. Let me see if I can pull that up for you real quick here. <laughs> it's probably not going to format well at all here. Uh, Jeremy was helping us out here. He says 25%. It's going to take a few seconds. It, it does for the chats to come through and then I can tap on them and you can see that, but, um, yeah, definitely a good deal on here. So if you haven't already, I'm going to pull up the page for the giveaway and then we're going to get going on that giveaway. I do appreciate you guys sticking around. It's been a great show today. This is tech on Tuesday, episode 16. We've been looking at a variety of products from, we started the show off with the Tron D, which we're giving away, this is the six outlet portable adapter, splitter, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying not to break the box up because I got to send this thing back out to the winner. Um, what's cool about it is it plugs in and it can rotate to free up your other outlets. So if you've got a big AC adapter, you need it out of the way, you can move it around. Comes with three of those USBs. I'm going to take a look real quick here. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like Jeremy's is going to let me put it there. Uh, 127 with tax and after discounts, 25% saves. There we go. Uh, the other one wouldn't come up, but, uh, Joe, thank you so much for purchasing that. Uh, so he did purchase it. It was 2742 with tax in wherever state he's in and all the discounts, 25% total savings right now. So the cool thing about that is when companies send these things out, I'm able to get you even better deals than what you see on the site. Uh, and thanks again to the Orimo company. They did the very best that they could to get me the best price that I could on this thing. Uh, a very great, cool piece of tech. And I'm going to use this in my car a lot. So I just, now I got to figure out how to get that like mount. I'm going to come up with a really cool mount system. So we're going to go on to the Orimo, which is uh, not the Orimo, sorry, the Tron D, which is coming up next. This is the form here just to fill out, just name, email, so I can get a hold of you later if we miss each other and then the name that you want on the prize wheel that's the only thing that's required and i'm going to go ahead and start tabulating entries i'm going to check the chat a couple more times if you've got questions let me know but with that was all of the products we're going to go on to doing the giveaway so i'm going to pull up the orimo one more time on the amazon i see there's a few of there if you haven't entered already there's still time go ahead and do that i'm just cleaning up around here a little bit <laughs> so while i'm doing that you can still get your entry in if you haven't already um, this is tech on tuesday i do this show every single week and if i can i try to do a free product giveaway like this because who doesn't like free stuff right so i would give away the orimo but I'm going to use that one. <laughs> that one's going in my car. I think it's such a cool product. And again, really want to thank 70 my for sending out that dash cam, probably one of the coolest dash cams I've seen yet. So I'm going to get some of these products moved out of the way a little bit. And hopefully you guys found something of interest here on the show today. Uh, hopefully you guys 
enjoy this. I'm going to go ahead and log into my site here. Nobody look at my password. <laughs> and we're going to go from there. And we'll take a look at that. I'm going to take a look at the chats one more time. Carlos is saying, good luck, y'all. <laughs> okay, we're going to find out how many people have actually entered this. Um, again, this is hopefully U.S. people only. That was in the rules here. If it's not a U.S. person, I'm going to come up with something uh, for you if that's the case. But I do need to make sure that we say U.S. addresses only. Um, this is for the outlet splitter, I guess we call it. USB charger also. Um, this definitely does take the purpose of a USB charger. It goes right there. I'm going to go into the giveaway and we're going to get the entries out. And I'm going to go ahead and get our live wheel going here. Tron D giveaway. I'm going to go ahead, view submissions. We're going to export them. <laughs> here we go. And no debate and no uh, entering 72 times, people. Hey, I've, I've seen that happen sometimes. I'm just saying, you know. I'm going to export here and try not to do duplicates. If I see any duplicates, I'm going to have to talk to some people here. Okay, perfect. Nope, no duplicates so far. Thank you guys so much for watching the stream. And thank you so much for you guys that shared the stream as well. That's just another way that we can keep doing this over and over. And I'm going to be pulling up Live Spinner. Spinner wheel, is it? That's the one. That's the one we use around here, and we are going to load it up. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go into the settings. We're going to do the sounds. We're going to spin it for a total of 10 seconds. Fly settings. Full screen. Okay, hopefully you guys will be able to hear this. And you guys will be able to see this. This is for the Tron D splitter. We're going to go right now. Oh, gosh. It's the green. Green, you got it, man. <laughs> awesome. So glad that you could win this. I will be getting this thing on its way over to you soon. Package that up again. This was the Tron D splitter. Let me pull it up real quick here on its Amazon page because they did provide this free of charge so that I could give it away to you guys, which is awesome. And I will show that if anybody else wants to purchase this wall outlet adapter again, right now it's already on 20% off. So if you didn't win and you decide that you want to purchase this thing, it's not a bad deal at all. Uh, very, very usable. I could see this. And uh, congratulations, Green, on the win. That's been the show today, guys. Next week, I'm debating on right now if I'm going to do a PC build. I've got some other really cool products. I've got some PCs I could build. I also have some products that have been arriving real recently. I've got an impact wrench for cars that's also a battery jump starter and also like a power pack, a portable power pack, which looked pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to find out if that thing's junk or if it's good, and I'll let you know. And I've got some other neat products in here. Um, I've got boxes and boxes behind me of products that are kind of categorized together, so we'll see. Let me know in the uh, chat if you would like to do a PC build show next week or if uh, something like this, a product show, tickles your fancy. And I will take a look at that. And thank you guys for watching. Thanks, everybody, that tuned in tonight. Uh, this is Tech on Tuesday. This is number 16 in the books. And congratulations to Green for winning this. It'll be on its way shortly. And I will catch you guys in the next one.